Once, when Care was crossing a river, she saw some clay. She thoughtfully took a piece and began to shape it. While she was thinking about what she had made, Jupiter came by. Care asked him to give it spirit, and this he gladly granted. But when she wanted her name to be bestowed upon it, Jupiter forbade this and demanded that it be given his name instead. While Care and Jupiter were arguing, Earth arose and desired that her name be conferred upon the creature since she had offered it part of her body. They asked Saturn to be the judge, and Saturn gave them the following decision, which seemed to be just. Since you, Jupiter, have given its spirit, you should receive that spirit at death. And since you, Earth, have given its body, you shall receive its body. But since Care first shaped this creature, she shall possess it as long as it lives. Welcome to Back to the Text Themselves, a series on phenomenology. Today's video examines sections 41 and 42 of Heidegger's Being in Time. In the last video, we considered how anxiety leads Dasein to flee from itself and its possibilities by being entangled in the they. This analysis of anxiety was preparatory for gaining access to the being of Dasein, disclosing the fundamental ontological characteristics that, when considered together, constitute the unified being of Dasein as Dasein. First, in provoking Dasein to flee into an entangled manner of being with others, anxiety discloses Dasein's fallenness. Second, in encountering a world no longer familiar to us, appearing in the mode of the uncanny, anxiety discloses the thrownness of our facticity. Third, in confronting Dasein with its own most possibilities, anxiety discloses our existentiality. And so, in anxiety, we discover the three existential determinations of Dasein, its fallenness, facticity, and existentiality. The question Heidegger poses to us is how these three are characterized in their unified primordial coherence. In other words, if fallenness, facticity, and existentiality disclose a unified phenomenon rather than merely three distinct categories, what is it that unifies them? And so the following questions will be addressed. One, how is it that fallenness, facticity, and existentiality are unified? Two, why does the phenomenon of care unify them? And three, how is care distinct from willing and wishing? Heidegger identifies Dasein as that being who is fundamentally defined by its concern about its own being. This being concerned about characterizes Dasein's being ahead of itself in already being in the world as being together with others. This lengthy hyphenation of terms can be quite confusing, so let's break it down. First, being ahead of itself concerns Dasein's existentiality. Dasein projects itself toward its own most potentiality for being through its understanding of things. This is what it means for Dasein to be ahead of itself. Dasein not only has possibilities, but it is its possibilities. To understand this, I'll draw upon the example of my experience reading Heidegger's text in preparation for creating these videos. One thing I've learned as a teacher is that reading with the intention of teaching the material offers a particular understanding that I can't access when I'm simply reading a text for the sake of learning it. How I'm projecting myself toward my possibilities determines how I understand the text. Second, already being in the world concerns Dasein's facticity. For Dasein to be ahead of itself necessitates already being in a world in which one dwells and in which places limits on what one can become. We're thrown into a world that we have not chosen and within which we take our place and receive our possibilities. Attunement uniquely discloses Dasein's relation to this facticity, and these moods open up particular manners of understanding things. Going back to my example now, I could not understandingly project myself toward my possibilities if I was not 
already in a situation that would allow for such possibilities to be actualized in the first place. I'm in a body that makes communication possible. I was born at a time and a place where the technology is available to me to allow me to present my understanding of the text to others on YouTube. Additionally, my state of mind or mode of attunement as it pertains to my facticity determines how I understand the text. Being in the mood of resentment toward my life, for example, would certainly lead me to understand the text in a manner very differently, perhaps focusing on certain themes and interpreting them in ways I would not have had if I was in a more uplifting mood, such as gratitude toward my throneness. Each mood, resentment and gratitude, for example, orient me to a particular understanding of the text. Third, being together with the other concerns Dasein's fallenness. Most of the time we relate to our possibilities unwillingly through our inauthentic entanglements with the they. Nonetheless, Dasein continues to project possibilities. The critical difference is that the authentic mode understandingly projects its own most possibilities Whereas in fallenness, Dasein inauthentically projects the possibilities that matter to the they. As such, even in fallenness, Dasein remains a being ahead of itself, though this self is, in this situation, the they self. Understanding is then limited to a publicly available manner of interpreting that restricts possibilities to what is familiar, feasible, correct, proper, and popular. In considering the possibilities of putting myself out there on YouTube, I could become anxious of what actualizing those possibilities might entail, such as the possibility of embarrassing errors or confronting the unfiltered criticisms of some viewers. Such anxiety may lead me to then flee into an inauthentic mode of relating to the text, whereby instead of reading the text directly, I just read summaries and commentaries on the text, letting the perspective of others completely dominate how I understand it and ultimately how I present it. This then delivers to me a sense of security knowing that I'm standing on firmer ground by relying on the accepted views of others rather than attempt to formulate my own understanding of the text and face the risks that come with that. And so we can now have some grasp of the lengthy and somewhat complex concept that Heidegger calls being ahead of itself and already being in the world as being together with others. However, a single word, in fact, can express this understanding of Dasein, and that term is care. Care precedes and encompasses our being ahead of itself and our already being in the world, as well as our being together with others. It defines the being that we fundamentally are and our being in its potentiality. I understandingly project my possibilities because I care about them. My care is also made manifest in the particular modes of attunement I take on with regard to my facticity. The world I find myself in matters to me, and in mattering to me, I find myself in particular moods with regard to that world. Even the leveling down of possibilities through our fallenness still enacts a mode of care because it discloses the kind of care specific to an absorbed entanglement with others. The difficulty doesn't so much lie in the lack of care, but instead in the lack of reflection and understanding toward this involvement, while also being tranquilized into believing we have understood. In this situation, I care for not my own most possibilities, but those of the they who define for me in advance the possibilities available to me in their publicly available interpretations. Consequently, Every act, every mode, every form of attunement, projection, thrownness, being in, being with, every understanding, every appropriation of possibilities, all of this is grounded in care. And such care indeed takes on distinct modes depending on what is being cared for, as we've talked about before. While things ready to hand are taken care of and letting them become relevant to us, when it comes to others, we become concerned for them in their being. In other words, it's the difference between caring about something versus caring for someone. Heidegger provides us 
further insight into care by showing us what care is not. He indicates that care is not equivalent to willing, wishing, or urges. The act of willing entails willing something. However, both the willing and the willed are preceded by a prior disclosure that makes this possible. That which is willed must already be disclosed in its purposes to have willed it in the first place. This means that I must have already cared for what I am willing before having willed it. Furthermore, to will is to have already disclosed Dasein as a being who cares for those possibilities that may be actualized through willing. So, for example, I will to upload this video. However, willing this means that I already understand what this video is for and that such a video is already made available to me to upload. I understand what this video is for because I have already taken care of it, which has brought it near to me in such a way that I can upload it. Furthermore, the fact of willing itself presupposes that there is a possibility that I care about actualizing and for this reason, I will to upload the video. But does care still precede and determine our inauthentic mode when that mode is defined by the anxious flight away from our possibilities toward the familiarity of the they? Heidegger says yes, because such a mode is not a complete extinction of our potentiality for being, but as I've already alluded to, offers a modification of it. Take for instance wishing. Wishing, Heidegger states, continues to project toward possibilities, but this time without a reflective understanding may manifest in an authentic mode of being, such as what one could see perhaps in willing. Instead, our being in the world becomes a wish world, marked by an entangled indulgence of possibilities that places them in the service of our urges and that crowds out other possibilities. To indulge in our wish world, nonetheless, still presupposes care, though in a kind of compulsive mode absent of freedom. I may wish to receive likes and subscribers from this video. I could care for the approval of others above all else. However, I may not be aware as to why I'm seeking this approval, nor truly be seeking out possibilities unique to me, but only those possibilities that I've been taught to seek, that is, the praise and approval of others. And in indulging in this wish unthinkingly, I do it out of a compulsion and then crowd out the other possibilities I could be projecting myself toward that are, in fact, unique to me. Now, to appreciate what Heidegger is saying here with regards to care, we have to consider this argument in the context of modern philosophy and the predominant paradigms that guide this thinking. By placing care at the foundation of Dasein's being, Heidegger is disputing the ideal of a disengaged reason that thinks it can achieve objective truth without the biases and unreliability of subjectivity. Disengaged neutral reason cannot be the foundation for truth because to relate to something objectively presupposes that one is already involved with and cares about things in a world that is also already imbued with meaning. However, don't mistake this for a kind of radical subjectivism or relativism either. Although care defines the being of Dasein, Dasein is not a subject as opposed to objects. Dasein is not simply free to make up any truth it wants. Because Dasein, along with being free for its possibilities and its existentiality, is determined by its facticity, by its thrownness in a world that it did not choose and cannot simply disregard since its very possibilities are always already embedded in that facticity. Now Heidegger here raises another question that he won't formally address until we get to the second half of the book of Being in Time. And that question is whether there remains an even more primordial phenomenon than care. Part of the answer is found in that fable that I started the video with and that Heidegger, in fact, presents us with in section 42, whereby Saturn judges how this creature is to be named and where it is to be seen. Saturn, who in Greek mythology is associated with Kronos, and from which derives the word chronology. So Heidegger is gradually leading us to the most fundamental concept of all, the one upon which the question of the meaning of being is to be grounded in, and that is the concept of time. 
I want to thank the following for supporting this channel on Patreon. If you wish to support this work on Patreon, the link is below in the description. You can also support this work by liking and sharing this video and subscribing to my channel. As always, thank you for watching and until next time, be well.